What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on wild tech experiments like this one. Today, we're diving headfirst into a topic that's more important than ever online privacy. For the past 60 days, I went on a mission. I decided to see if I could become a digital ghost, practically invisible online. This wasn't just about using a VPN or private browsing mode. I went all in using some of the most secure and anonymous operating systems on the planet. I'm talking about a complete system overhaul designed from the ground up to leave no trace. So why should you even care about online privacy? It's a fair question. A lot of people say I have nothing to hide, so why should I worry? But that's looking at it the wrong way. Think about it like having curtains on your windows. You're not doing anything wrong inside your house, but you still close them for privacy. You don't want strangers peering in, judging what you're watching on TV, what you're eating for dinner, or how messy your living room is. Your personal data is incredibly valuable, not just to you, but to countless companies. They collect information about your interests, your health concerns, your political views, your location, and even your mood, all based on your online activity. This data is then used to build a detailed profile of you, which can be sold to advertisers, insurance companies, or data brokers. To understand how to become invisible, you first need to understand how you're being seen. Every time you go online, you leave behind a trail of digital breadcrumbs. This starts with your IP address, a unique number assigned to your internet connection that can pinpoint your general geographic location. Websites use cookies, tiny files stored on your computer to remember you. While some are useful, like keeping you logged into a site, others, known as tracking cookies, follow you across the web, building a detailed history of your browsing habits. Giant tech companies like Google and Meta have trackers embedded on millions of websites across the internet. Another powerful tracking method is called browser fingerprinting. This is a more advanced technique where websites collect information about your specific device and browser configuration. While each piece of information might seem generic, the unique combination creates a fingerprint that is surprisingly unique to you. This means that even if you clear your cookies and use a VPN, companies can still potentially identify and track you across the web. So how do we fight back against this constant tracking? This is where anonymous operating systems come in. Think of them as a complete privacy-focused toolkit, all bundled into one system, unlike regular operating systems like Windows or Mac OS, which are designed for general use and often have data collection features built in, these specialized systems are engineered from the ground up with one primary goal, to protect your anonymity and privacy. The core technology behind most of these systems is Tor. Tor, which stands for the Onion Router, is a global network of volunteer-operated servers that allows you to browse the internet anonymously. When you use Tor, your internet traffic is encrypted and bounced through a random series of at least three servers, called relays, before it reaches its final destination. Each relay only knows the identity of the server that came before it and the one that comes after it. One of the most popular and user-friendly anonymous operating systems is TAILS, which stands for the Amnesic Incognito Live System. This was my starting point for my 60-day experiment, and honestly, it's a fantastic entry point for anyone new to this world. The beauty of TAILS is its simplicity and portability. It's designed to run from a USB stick. So how do you get it? The first step is to head to the official TAILS website. You'll need two USB sticks, one to act as an intermediary installer, and the final one, at least eight gigabytes. The website provides incredibly clear step-by-step -step instructions. Now, a crucial step here is to verify the download. The website gives you a cryptographic signature to check against your downloaded file. Once you've verified the download, you'll use a tool like Belina Etcher to flash the Tails image onto your first USB stick. Using Tails is surprisingly straightforward. You just plug your Tails USB into a computer, turn it on, Tails will boot up into a familiar looking desktop environment. It automatically connects to the Tor network. When you're finished, just shut down the computer and remove the USB. Thanks to its amnesic nature, it's as if you were never there. After getting comfortable with Tails, I decided to level up my privacy game and try Woonix. This system takes a fundamentally different approach to anonymity, and honestly, it's absolutely brilliant. Instead of running as a single live operating system from a USB stick, Woonix is designed to run inside two isolated virtual machines on your existing computer. One virtual machine is called the gateway, and the other is the workstation. Here's how it works. The Woonix gateway's only job is to connect to the Tor network and route all internet traffic through it. 
It's essentially a dedicated Tor router that lives inside a virtual machine. The Wonix workstation, where you actually do all your work, browsing, writing, and so on, is completely isolated from the internet. It can only connect to the network through the gateway. This means that even if your workstation were to get infected with a virus or some nasty malware, that malware would still be unable to discover your real IP address because it has no direct connection to the internet. It can only see the internal IP of the gateway. Setting up Wunix is a bit more involved than Tails, but still very manageable for a typical tech enthusiast. First, you need to install virtualization software on your computer, like the free and open source VirtualBox. While Tails and Wunix were the focus of my 60-day challenge, they are not the only players in the game of secure operating systems. For those who want to take security to an even higher level, there's Cubes OS. Often recommended by security experts like Edward Snowden, Cubes operates on a principle called security by compartmentalization. You might have one cube for personal browsing, another for work, another for banking. If one of your cubes gets compromised, say, you accidentally download malware in your untrusted cube, the damage is completely contained within that single compartment. Honestly, it's the Fort Knox of operating systems. On the other end of the spectrum, you have projects like Discrete Linux. This system is designed with a very specific threat model in mind, protecting sensitive data against Trojan attacks, even when the user is not a security expert. It's aimed at people like journalists, human rights activists, and political dissidents who may be targeted by sophisticated adversaries. Using a secure operating system like Tails or Wunix is a massive step, but technology alone won't make you a digital ghost. Your behavior and habits are just as important. The biggest rule is to avoid cross-contamination. This means you should never log into your real-world accounts, your personal Google, Facebook, or Twitter, while using your anonymous setup. The moment you do that, you've linked your anonymous session directly to your real identity, defeating the entire purpose. Think of it like a secret identity. Clark Kent doesn't wear his Superman costume to the Daily Planet. Consistency in your behavior is also key to avoiding being de-anonymized. Try not to use unique writing styles, slang, or phrases that you use on your public profiles. Similarly, avoid visiting a small, unique combination of websites that might create a behavioral fingerprint. The goal is to blend in with the crowd of other anonymous users. As my 60-day journey into the world of digital anonymity came to a close, the biggest takeaway wasn't about the technology itself. It was about a fundamental shift in perspective. Society often wrongly associates anonymity with illegal or malicious intent. We're taught that if you want to be anonymous, you must be doing something wrong. But my experience cemented a very different truth. Anonymity isn't about hiding from justice. It's about protecting our freedom. Think about the role anonymity has played throughout history. Whistleblowers who expose corruption rely on it. Journalists working in repressive regimes need it to protect their sources and themselves. The tools we've talked about today, Tails, Wunix, Cubes, are not dark or nefarious. They are instruments of liberty. They empower the individual. I encourage every single one of you to give this a try. You don't have to go on a 60-day deep dive like I did. Start small. Download Tails onto a USB stick and spend an afternoon browsing with it. See what it feels like to navigate the web knowing that your every move isn't being tracked and cataloged. The feeling is incredibly liberating. Protecting your privacy is one of the most important things you can do in the 21st century, and these tools make it possible. It's your data, your freedom. It's time to take it back.